Lake Brooks Construction was the low bidder. It's US 224, the road replacement from St. Mary's River east to a little bit east of Jackson Street. So the owner is of, is of course in Doc, and Susan Dole is the project manager, and Nate Whitaker is the uh, construction area engineer. AECOM, who, who I work for, I'm Gary Moraska, I'm the project manager for AECOM, we're, the, we're the, the designer of record. And Brooks Construction is the contractor who will be doing the construction, and the Fertel is the project supervisor. So those, I know so, there may be some people that are new to this project, that were unfamiliar, maybe new to the area, moved in, we just want to make sure everyone understands what the purpose of the project is and maybe some of the project scope. Um, obviously everyone's aware that 224 gets flooded frequently, you know, probably average every three, four years, it just depends, but the goal is to, you know, we're going to raise the roadway and increase uh, increase it more serviceable, you know, so it's less frequently flooded, and we're going to raise it to a, to just above the 50-year flood elevation. So when there is a 100-year flood elevation of uh, event at the St. Mary's River, the road water will still go over the roadway, but it hopefully will not be deep enough that emergency response and stuff like that can get through more uh, easily. But it is being designed to a 50-year flood. And that's the purpose. You know, the purpose is to make the road more serviceable to the users of Decatur, Adams County, and the state of Indiana. The length is, is a half a mile. And as I said, it starts at the same, just on the east side of the St. Mary's River Bridge and continues east and northeast to about 700 feet east of Jackson Street. Um, the, the project, since we're raising the road, we're going to be putting all new pavement in, all new curb and gutter, New storm sewers that are going to collect the water during, during normal rain events um, and just be distributed into the St. Mary's River. There'll be new lighting and traffic control devices. We also are raising US 224 about seven feet at its maximum point. Um, and it's going to be on retaining walls. And the, the purpose of the retaining walls is to, to minimize impact to the floodplain. So we're building, it's going to, the roadway is going to be two lane, one lane instruction, and then it'll have, uh, it's gonna have uh, guardrails on each side, and then there'll be a retaining wall um, a little bit behind the guardrail. There also are two compensatory storage sites. Due to the erase in the road, we do, have to, we do have to mitigate impacts to the floodplain, and so we have, there is two sites, and they're shown on the, on the aerials, on, in the blue area there, and the orange that are being built, one off of Monroe Street and the other one off of Jackson Street, US 224 uh, intersection. And the goal is to provide 12 acre feet of storage. So if you can think of a 12 acre field and one foot of water depth, that's the amount of area that we have to, we have to provide storage for. And that's the, that area, we, that area that we're, they're gonna, they're gonna remove, excavate the, the soil below the current elevation of the, of the ground. And so those areas will become filled with water first when, there's a, when, the, when, the, when the river goes, gets out of its banks. And um, through our exhaustive hydro, hydraulic analysis that we did as a company along with NDOT, we, uh, reviewing it and helping us through it, um, provided that 12 acre feet of storage. We also providing a 12 foot by seven foot box cover. Um, just between, I'll, I'll point it out in a minute, just south of Jackson Street, uh, west of Jackson Street. And that'll allow the water to, 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 to transmit like it does now when the water goes over the roadway, underneath the roadway when there's a less than a, when there's a, 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 an event with the, with the river. It's basically an equalizer structure to allow, so water does not get trapped on the southwest, east side of, of US 224. The project was awarded to Brooks Construction for $3.9, almost $4 million. So now the three phases. Um, these, are the, these are the same drawings that are on the, on the wall over here, uh, on the uh, boards. Um, so during the first phase, the goal of the construction is to build the construction everything west and south of Jackson Street. Um, 
So traffic that wants to get to the school from Decatur will, will come, Jackson Street will remain open, as the mayor said, at all times. Traffic that wants to get to Lumber Loss Drive will have access. We're, the road is going to be closed. All traffic, through traffic is going to be closed through a state detour. And that could be from 27 on the west side, we'll go south on 27 to US 33 over to State Route 101 and over. So any through traffic will be going through the detour. So local traffic will be, will have to go around barricades like normal. Um, when there's a road closed, but they'll be allowed to, and so there'll be two lanes, each strip, one lane each direction, at all times to provide access to Lumber, lumber Loss uh, Drive, so that's, so access to the, to the, uh, to the subdivision can get access to the Decatur. They also can come up here and come up, uh, up Monroe, and either take Og Street or East over to Piqua. Um, so during the construction, we're going to be Building the storm sewers and the pavement on this part of the of this of the of the, the project, Monroe Street intersection will be closed, and the construction of the compensatory sites will be going on. And this is going to start um, next month and carry on through till probably May time, May of 2017. So this is this, so this will be the traffic pattern for about six to seven eight months, about six months. So pedestrians, pedestrians be allowed to go if they, if they want to walk from walk to school, or walk along Jackson Street, or will walk walk through this subdivision up through Ox Street into the into the school. So as I, as I, and also as I mentioned, here's where here's the proximal location of where the box car is going to be. There's a drainage tile right now, a legal drain tile that goes through there that we're going to be uh, putting the structure on top of. So phase two goes from during the summer of next year, so from May to July. Basically the traffic pattern is going to be almost the same as it currently is in phase one. The only difference is, is that the construction around lumber loss is going to change It'll just slightly. We're, instead of the other half of the street is going to be transferred to the other side. You know, So the first phase we're going to be constructing the, the north side of the street. During phase two, we're going to be constructing the south side of the street. That's the only difference on phase, between phase one and phase two. Everything else remains the same. Oh, thank you. And Limber Loss is closed because we have to construct, so Limber Loss will have, traffic will have to come up through Hog Street and come back around. And that's a two month period that we have to do that because we have to get this connection with Lumber Lost and um, 224. And then finally on phase three, this part of the project will be constructed of 224. However, the road will be closed here at Monroe Street. So this, this, part, this part will likely be predominantly or substantially complete. So the goal is we have to raise the intersection at Jackson Street and 224 and North Adams Drive about two to three feet. So we have to replace all the pavement and raise the grade and build all the, all the drainage structures there. So that intersection has to be closed. So that's why we're gonna provide access to the school by Monroe Street from the, uh, on the south side of the high school. And then that always access can come in from the north side or from Piqua from north on to Monroe Street. So pedestrians, if pedestrians want it, they'll be able to come along the new constructed highway and come along and come through Hog Street. Now Hog Street's gonna have to be closed due to this connection here with North Adams Drive. But we're gonna allow, we would like to have pedestrians be in a safe zone along Hog Street to provide access to the high school for those that wanna walk. So that's um, that's the general pattern of the uh, of the different phases. Um, again, these are your these are your contact information, people. If you have questions, obviously um, 
Jerry outside, and of course Nate Whitaker is is over is is um, helping Jerry manage the project from a construction standpoint. And obviously, so Susan Dole is the project manager. Um, my single point of contract contact, and and uh, and and she that's how she stood. And then of course the communications director director uh, Nicole will help with communications with the city and with people who have any questions. So with that we will we welcome any questions. We can we can handle them at the uh, displays. Please please feel free. Hopefully I uh, gave a general overview of how it's going it's going to work from a traffic standpoint. And um, if you have any specific questions about the design or about anything aspects with related to the phasing, please come see me, Susan, whoever would be happy to help you. Thank you all. Thank you for all coming too. Thank you. Have a great evening.